Welcome to part two of my Haterade how-to tutorial. Integrate Plex with HomeKit via HomeBridge. Now in part one, I showed you how to download and set up all the necessary files and software programs needed to get started with HomeBridge and JSON. This video is part two, and I'm gonna show you how to configure HomeBridge and download the plugin for Plex sensors and set up HomeBridge so that it will show up as a bridge and HomeKit. Now, if you haven't watched part one in this series, please hit pause on this video, go back and watch part one, and then come back to this video to continue the tutorial. Let's discuss. All right, so the first thing that we wanna do is we wanna search, find, and add our Plex sensors. But before we do that, let me just explain what the Plex sensors are so you can understand how all of this works. So think of Plex sensors as an actual motion sensor in HomeKit. If I have a hallway motion sensor in HomeKit, it's idle until that motion sensor detects motion. Once motion is detected, HomeKit sees this and says, hey, motion is detected in the hallway, what would you like me to do? And then I can create an automation when motion is detected in the hallway, I want the hallway lights to come on, and after five minutes of no motion detected, I want the hallway lights to turn off. Plex sensors work just like that. And while there isn't a physical sensor, the Plex sensors plugin acts as a sensor on the network. So the way it works is, by adding Plex sensors in HomeBridge, this allows HomeKit to see what's happening in Plex. Now, there are four Plex sensors that we are gonna create play, stop, and pause, resume. So when a movie is started in Plex, HomeBridge activates the sensor, and this allows HomeKit to see that a sensor has detected something. In this case, a movie has started, and HomeKit says, I see you started a movie in Plex, what do you want me to do? Now, if I pause the movie, then HomeKit stops detecting that the play sensor is active, and says, I stopped detecting that a movie is playing, and now I've detected that the pause sensor is active. What do you want me to do? And then I can create automations for each sensor. Now, before I go any further, for those of you computer nerds out there who have experience with JSON, this is probably gonna be a cakewalk. And there are setup instructions on Homebridge's plugin page for Plex webhooks that I will also link in the description. For those of you who have no idea what JSON is, Bear with me as we go through this setup. And if you get lost or stuck, pause, take a deep breath, rewind this video, and start over if you need to. All right, good. So we're gonna click on plugins, and we're gonna search for Plex webhooks. Once it's installed, we're gonna find it in our list and hit settings. This is where we're gonna create our sensors that will show up in HomeKit. Now you can name these whatever you want, but I would advise you to name them exactly what they are. So we're gonna type Plex Webhooks Platform in the name section. Then we're gonna add our first sensor. Sensor number one, we're gonna call Plex movie, parentheses, play, forward slash, stop, parentheses. Sensor number two, we're gonna call Plex movie, parentheses, resume, forward slash, pause, parentheses. And then we're gonna hit save. Now we need to configure webhooks and HomeBridge. So we're going to select plugins and under HomeBridge Plex webhooks, we're going to select the little wrench. 
This is where we are going to configure our webhooks. Next, we're going to select JSON config. So what we need to do is we want to delete everything in here. Then we need to copy the JSON config that's in the description of this video. Copy it and paste it here. Now make sure you copy starting before the squiggly open bracket all the way down to right after the closed squiggly bracket. Make sure there are no spaces before or after those squiggly brackets. Once it's been copied, now we want to find any instance of Haterade in the JSON config and replace it with your Plex client. Haterade is the device or Plex client that shows up in my Plex. You need to replace Haterade with your Plex client. Now this could be an Xbox, Shield, or Apple TV. So you can assign a webhook to work for as many clients as you want. If you want to control your lights with Plex and multiple Plex clients, then you have to set this up for every client. If you only want this to work with one client, then no worries. But if you have multiple clients in your home theater that you use with Plex, unfortunately, you'll have to configure each one of these. However, for this tutorial, we're only gonna set up one client, and that should be good for most people. To find your clients, you go back to Plex, select Settings, and over to your left under Accounts, you'll select Authorized Devices. This is where all of your Plex clients that have accessed your server will show up, including remote users. So then you would just scroll through the list until you find the client that you want the webhook to work with. So for instance, if I wanted to use my Xbox, I would select the name. Now, I manually changed my Xbox to Haterade, and I know it's my Xbox because it tells me at the very bottom. If you haven't changed the name of your devices, then Use whatever name is at the very top. Now I would suggest right clicking and then copy to make sure you get the naming exact because it must be exactly as it shows up in Plex. Very, very important. Then we'll go back to our webhook and home bridge and paste the name. Once you've replaced Haterade with your Plex client of choice, hit save. Now, it's worth noting if you see anything underlined in red, it means something is wrong. You may have forgotten a comma or you may have too many spaces. But if you try to hit save and it says JSON error, you need to look for anything that's underlined in red and fix it. For example, if I type too many spaces or if I forget to put a comma, you'll see that there's going to be a red line and if I try to hit save, it's not going to let me do it. So make sure that you check and you don't have any red lines underlined anywhere. Okay. That was a lot and probably a little bit overwhelming. But we're almost done with this video and I promise everything else we need to do is going to be gravy compared to JSON. So we want to go back and refresh Homebridge. After you launch Homebridge, look for the listening URL. We're going to add this URL as a webhook URL on your Plex Media Server webhooks settings page. Next, we need to edit our webhooks in Plex. Now, if you don't know what a webhook is, a webhook allows web applications to automatically communicate with other web apps, eliminating the need for constant checking to be done by a user. Webhooks operate entirely over the internet and allows you to send real-time data from one application to another whenever a given event occurs. The data is then sent over the web from the application where the event originally occurred, in this case, Plex, to the receiving application that handles the data, Homebridge or HomeKit. This exchange of data happens over the web through a webhook URL. 
and a webhook URL is provided by the receiving application and acts as a phone number that the other application can call when an event happens. So to link Plex with Homebridge via a webhook, we want to go to the Homebridge user interface of Homebridge and copy this IP address right here. Next, we're going to go back to our tab that we opened for Plex. And if you don't already have the webhook section open, then you'll need to click on settings. Then over to your left, you'll see webhooks. Click on webhooks, and then we want to select add webhook. Then we can paste our IP address into the URL. We're going to type HTTP colon forward slash forward slash, and then our IP address. Hit save, and that's done. So our final step is going to be adding Homebridge as a hub in HomeKit. This might be the easiest step in the whole process. To add Homebridge as a hub, you have two options. You can either scan the QR code that's displayed on the homepage of Homebridge's web UI, or you can type in the eight digit numerical code. If you're watching this, then you probably aren't a first time HomeKit user. So there's no need to school you on adding accessories to HomeKit. You know the drill. If you have never used HomeKit before, then just open your home app, hit the plus sign and scan the QR code. From there, it's pretty self-explanatory. Apple is really, really good about making the setup process very simple and it'll walk you through it. Now, in order for Homebridge to work properly, it's highly recommended that you install Homebridge on a computer that is on 24 seven with the ethernet connection. Now, some of you might scoff at that, but what I did, I just installed Homebridge on the same computer as my Plex server. I leave mine on 24 seven, but you may not. You might only turn yours on whenever you want to watch Plex, but a big benefit of installing Homebridge on the same machine as your Plex server is that whenever you are using Plex, you know Homebridge is going to be running as well. So I just wanted to let you know that. All right, guys. That is actually going to conclude it for part two of this tutorial series. You've got one step left, so you can go ahead and click on part three of this video. You'll see it as an end card at the end of this video, or you can just go to my videos and you'll see it. You'll see the thumbnail. It'll say part three. So you're one step closer to integrating Plex with HomeKit. All right, guys, now I want you to do me a big favor. If you're enjoying this series, if you're enjoying this tutorial, it has taken a lot of work for me to make these videos and it's something that I've been wanting to do for a while. So if you could show your appreciation by hitting the like button, subscribing to the channel if you're not already and hitting the bell notification so you'll know when I post new content. I can't wait for you guys to finish setting up your home bridge with HomeKit so that you can enjoy the benefits of controlling your lights when you hit play or pause, stop and resume, just like I can. And it's a game changing feature that I know you're going to love and you're never going to want to go back. So I'll see you guys in part three of this video, as well as future videos. I'm Hater Cowboy, and this is Hater Cowboy Cinema.